I'll start with a question. Are you now, or have you ever been, a member of a sonic catering band? <laughs> uh, that's quite a hard one to hide, actually, really. Um, I try to hide a lot of things in my life, but I can't hide that one. Um, yeah, I was. I was in a sonic. A long time ago, 1996. Did we play here? No, we didn't play here. We played a few places in Europe, but not, not in Belgium, no. So, a uh, part of that was autobiographical? <laughs> I won't say which bits. It's, it's, uh, I think mean, making films is a game of hiding and revealing. and um, It's tempting to say what was not real, but maybe it's just better to say nothing. <laughs> um, I was very struck by your treatment of um, gastric problems because usually um, uh, irritable bowel syndrome and stuff like that in films is played for comedy in uh, the Coen Brothers remake of um, The Lady Killers, for example, and you treat it with huge empathy, I think. Well, yeah, I, I don't know, it just... Um, I, I guess, as you say, it was a, I guess it was a frustration, um, not just irritable bowel and Crohn's and celiac, but also allergies. And I think I just got tired of seeing films where anaphylactic shock was seen as comedy, and it's like, someone's going to die. It's not funny. Um, so I don't want to, say, cancel those films, but I just say, OK, you do your films, I'm going to do my film. And... Um, but it's hard, you know, because obviously I'm always scared of being too didactic and I don't want to be too earnest, which I think is a really bad thing. So you're trying to find, trying to find that middle ground between being serious about it, but... So having someone like Dr. Glock helped to not make it too serious. Um, your worst nightmare as a doctor, yeah. <laughs> I uh, the way he always had a glass of wine. <laughs> um, I think most of the cast you've worked with before, is that correct? Uh, not Acer. No, not, not Ariane, not Makis and not Acer. But Fatma, every film I've done has been fat, with Fatma Mohammed. Mm. Uh, Richard, I did in Fabric with Richard as well. Uh, so it's mainly um, Fatma. Do every film with Fatma, yeah. Um, you shot this during the time of Covid, was that a real challenge? Uh, yeah. I'm not in a rush to do it again. Um, yeah, we had many false starts, really. This is, this is our fourth attempt to do it. Um, there's always some kind of problem. Um, and this almost got cancelled because my landlady decided to sell the house as we were shooting. Um, and there was no way out of it. She was going to sell. Um, so I called everyone I knew, including the cast members, to see if they could buy it off her so we wouldn't have to move. Um, and in the end, I, I knew these divorce lawyers who had a really good year because of the pandemic. And they had spare cash, so they, they bought the house and they completed the last day of shooting. Um, so that was, you know, a bit stressful. But I mean, I think the hardest thing was not for us in our little world, was not the pandemic, it was the just 14 days to shoot a film. That was the shortest I've done. It was 14 days with the cast and three days for pickups. Because usually I had 24 days, that kind of thing. But yeah, 14 was, I'm not in a rush. No, that's not, not again. No, no. <laughs> um, that's, I think, uh, sound is always important in any films, but that's the second film that you've made that's um, specifically about sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess there was no way out of it, really. I mean, I, I, it's kind of weird because I think, I think, I'm trying to remember what was the starting point. I guess when you're making a film about the stomach, then I guess my band history kind of came into it. Um, all these things kind of interconnected. Um, the band, the stomach, the idea of shock value and going back to, you know, the Viennese actionists or bands like White House, um, Throbbing gristle, the whole there's a whole history of, of that and seeing how it ties in with the bowels and um, the taboo of the stomach and should it be a taboo? You know, it's uh, that that's what I was interested in. You know, does it liberate someone to talk about these things more freely without in, in any kind of shame? Um, and also, I think just the nature of a patron and an, and an artist and that. 
that somewhat fraught relationship. Um, I also uh, I, I like very much that your films are uh, um, a very British, but very not British at the same time. If that mm -hmm. makes sense, there's a um, the sense of humour I think is really British. Uh, in the there are a lot of memes going around. Um, this is what English people say, like. Um, at the end of the mail, they'll say, I'll think about it. But what they really mean is fuck off and done. <laughs> and and uh, you use dialogue um, in a very double entendre way. Uh, yeah, sometimes, but sometimes I'm not even aware. I, uh, when I wrote about the flounder, <clears throat> I didn't realise until afterwards when I read a review that a flanger has a double meaning of a part of the female anatomy and I honestly had no idea. I was thinking about, well, we used flangers in the band, you know, we were into... First time I heard a flanger, I think it was Bowie when he did um, V2 Schneider, that opening, that beautiful, strange opening I just saw in Christian F when she goes on that S-Barn and you get that flanger coming over it and I thought, wow, it's an amazing sound. Um, I think it's a flanger, if, correct me if I'm wrong, but anyway, um, we use a lot of flanger in this film. I mean, even the telephone was flanged. So, <laughs> so I'm, I'm, that's not really answering your question about English double, yeah, double, yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, I guess being half Greek, half British, maybe, yeah, yeah. And, and also, um, you can see the critics flailing around trying to um, classify you as a sort of... Um, do you feel ever that you 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 have one foot in the well, Greek weird wave? Um, like the Yathos laughing. I mean, I, I I guess I mean weirdly I I know him because of my American agent. I don't know him from Greece. I knew music people from Greece, but I I knew him from this other way through through my from my agent. We were just friends for quite a few years. And I met Ariane through, through Mr. Lanthimos. Um, but yeah, for me, it wasn't really a, anything connected to that. I think a lot of it, if I'm honest, was... Well, one is just, I like the actors. I mean, Mac is... I just... I thought he'd be a great Stones. I saw him in Suntan and in Chevalier, and I thought, this guy's amazing. Um, but there's another part of it was... Uh, maybe, I don't want to get too heavy about this, but like a post-Brexit thing of... It's like, I'm just kind of stamping my feet. I want to make a European film. I want to have uh, actors with their own accents. I don't want to have... I'm just tired of British people putting on Eastern European accents or Southern European accents and um, let people have their own accents, let them speak in their own language. Um, and maybe just an excuse to try and get my Greek back if I see the subtitles enough, yeah. Um, has anybody got any questions they would like to ask? Not many. Um, the band I was in, um, Salo, I was a big fan of Pasolini's Salo. Um, more the structure, with the three act structure. Well, three act stuff isn't everything, but you know, you had the circle of shit, this kind of thing. And I remember that. I remember the dread when I watched Salo. You had that title thing, the circle of shit, and you have this very calm scene with this woman getting ready in a, in a room. And you know, this is the calm before the storm. There was, I remember my heart was pounding with fear and I wanted to kind of copy that with this film when you have the, the briefcase opening with the colonoscopy tube and you're thinking oh no what's going to happen next um, um most I'm trying to think the Viennese actionists I'm not really a fan because I'm a vegetarian but that was something interesting for me um a lot of music to be honest Bands like Zerbit France, Nurse with Wound, Throbbing Gristle, White House. There was another film, oh God, what was it now? Oh, Spinal Tap, that was it, Spinal Tap. That, seriously, that, that was, I wanted to make my own version of Spinal Tap. Um, I mean, not, 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 just, not just Spinal Tap, but also things like, um, what's that, uh, the Penelope Spiris documentary, The Decline of the Western Civilization, Part Two, The Metal Years. Just these rock and roll cliches, which are kind of interesting if you put that into a band where you wouldn't expect those cliches. I mean, I've never heard of this kind of band having orgies. <laughs> it's usually you associate that with very male environments, so it was kind of interesting, uh, as in a kind of an absurdist re... What's the word? 
shuffling, what do you want to call it? Mix and match. I guess, yeah. yeah. Because um, I'm, it's quite difficult to pin down your genres, but you obviously drawing from lots of different ones. Um, and I read that also you have an interest, um, professional interest in 70s porn. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Sorry, sorry, I was interrupting. Mm. Um, yeah, no, Wakefield Paul was an, in but yeah, I guess he was a loose influence on this one. Um, I remember watching Bijou, and he died quite recently, actually. Um, um, the way he shot Bijou was remarkable. Um, just these multi projections, and, and Derek Jarman as well. I mean, he used to shoot on Super 8. I think he used to shoot at six frames a second. But he project it back at three frames a second, so you had this really stilted time lapse quality to 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 the images. Um, but yeah, I think um, that whole period in the 70s porn was amazing, like uh, Wakefield Paul, Jim Bidgood, Fred Halstead. Um, yeah, there's some really crazy the stuff. Thing, oh yeah, yes. of course. Last time I was here, she was here. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Um, I certainly have scenes that I don't like anymore, that's for sure. Um, I look at some scenes and I cringe. Um, think, why? Some things just don't go to plan, other, other, other things do. I, I, I guess my favorite is the abattoir performance when she copies the, the captive bolt pistol which they put on cattle and pigs when they, before you eat them, you know. Um, yeah, that was, very intense. We only did that in two takes. That's all we had time for. Everything was like two takes, basically. We had 14 days. So Fatma just got in this trance. I played her Merzbau at very high volume. And she just went for it, really. Um, that was a lot of fun to do in post-production in terms of the sound. It's just, it was a nightmare for the cue sheet because there's, there's samples everywhere. Um, but yeah, I felt we, you know, it's got its problems in terms of the speed at which we shot it. Um, you can see the focus is, is not always there. Um, but I think it got this intensity that I was after. I, I, I guess that's what always fascinates me in all the influences I was talking about, even porno, was just intensity. Having this catharsis, this... Um, I guess this, I look for that in music as well, bands like Swans, just purging something unspoken. Maybe it's this Greek Orthodox inside me, I'm not sure, this need for catharsis. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.